Hey all, this is Paleac, and in this music tutorial I'm going to talk about stereo imaging and other kind of creative ways to pan and move your sounds around in space through either filtering or by swapping the speakers, um, which I feel like is an often overlooked subject and technique done in production that I think is super useful for making your sounds just like feel less loopy and is more interesting, you know? So, um, yeah, in the video, we're mostly going to go over, I'm just going to talk about a bunch of different techniques that I use and little tricks that you can go over. And in the end, I build this audio effect rack, which uh, does this. So I have this sound here. Right, that's fun. It's just like a little breakbeat loop kind of thing. So what this does is it basically has four different band pass filters that are displayed or represented by these band reject filters here that move around and while they're moving around they're being panned left and right uh, through the filter. So you can see that this is on left mode and right mode and then these are both band reject filters and their Q value is varying and then this gets passed into a phase inverted a utility so that all you hear is the signal being deleted. It sounds like this. And then there's also the swap delay that I show you guys how to build. And this will swap the sounds every time it plays as opposed to like ping pong delay which just sends the sound to one speaker and then to another. This is what this sounds like over white noise, so you know like exactly what's being filtered. All right. We put this on a drum loop. And now, real quick before the tutorial starts, I have a Patreon for $15 a month. You can get access to sample packs and private exclusive tutorials and um, all the sound design racks that I cover in my videos, the sound design racks within this video. If you don't want to build them yourself, you can sign up for this and then you can just download them all. And uh, yeah, more future content. So if you take any sound and you hard pan it left or right, all it's going to do is lower the volume of the opposite speaker. So if I, uh, I'm just going to take two sounds. I'm going to pan one hard left, hard right, put them in a group. Right. Uh, if I pan this left, you're not going to hear anything on the right. And if I pan this right, you're not going to hear anything on the left. It just lowers the volume of them. And that's not how things realistically pan in the real world. So we're going to create a realistic panning knob so that you can pan the left and right speakers individually. So to do that, I'm going to take a utility. And I'm going to duplicate, uh, create a parallel pane. And uh, in one of them, I'm going to set this to be only the left speaker. So what this does is it takes whatever sound is playing on the left and monos it. And then I'm going to do the same for this other one. Name this left, name this right, and then I will map the panning for the individual channels here. And then now you can pan them individually. And then so if you do this, then they're completely swapped. And you can create a smooth automation to swap them, basically. Oh. Right? Now, you can't really do that otherwise. So, for instance, uh, if you take a utility, you can just set it to swap, and then this is just going to swap it. 
but uh, it's going to be like a discrete jump. It's not smooth. So that's the benefit of using this. Now, I think this is important to start with because swapping is an extremely powerful uh, audio effect for stereo imaging. So if you take any sort of stereo signal, something being stereo just means that uh, there is a difference between the left and right speaker. If you take any sort of stereo signal and swap it, you're creating a variation very easily. Because even though you might have the same exact thing, just swap left and right, our ears are very asymmetrical. Um, you know, we are asymmetrical creatures, whether or not we actually look symmetrical. And there are subtle differences in how our ears are constructed that make them hear very differently from each other. Not only that, but our ears are also likely to be damaged differently. You know, we're, we're all music producers here, so I'm sure everyone listening to this has some form of hearing damage. Now, for me, my right ear is a little bit quieter than my left ear because when I was 18 and I worked at a pizza place, I had one earbud in, which is blast techno and just make pizzas for six hours a day. And that has damaged my ear, so that's fun. Um, wear hearing protection. And it's important. Now, um, that creates a difference between the left and right speakers. So even though this is like pretty much the same, it's like the same signals going in the left and right ear just swapped. That has a very different sound to it just because my ears hear differently. Not only that, but your own headphones and speakers can be different. So if you have like headphones, that uh, have like a, a cable or a cord running up to say the left headphone and then the right headphone is connected to the left headphone in a series, then that's gonna affect the like power output and the EQ response curve of the two headphone speakers relative to each other. So they're gonna be different as well. So not only are your ears different, but your headphones are different. So swapping shit is very different. This is a very, very, easy way to create variation. So if you have like a drum loop or something, um, let, me, let me just find some like stereo thing. So I have, so let's take this sound here and then um, put utility here. So we have this, I'm gonna make this less wider. So like, let's say it just loops there. If I set it to swap right here, it creates variation. And so instead of being something that loops every four seconds, now it is a little bit more uh, like dynamic in the stereo field and loops every eight seconds. And so this is a very easy way to create um, variation, you know? So like if I have this and then let's say I have something layered over it. I'm just gonna wing it and try to make some things by just glitching the sound. We have this. So let's just take that. And then, I don't know, let's take, add a, like a short delay. Right. And then we can take these two sounds. So this sound loops every five bars. And so what we can do is we can then create a variation on this one, the loop, uh, to swap after five bars. And so now. every 16 bars now it's these are very subtle differences in each you know four or two bars but it adds up and it creates it, it makes it a little bit more interesting and dynamic and less stagnant so this is very good to make your sounds sound less loopy just swap them just swap sounds every like four bars or whatever it's really really useful anything that's stereo can be swapped so if you take even for instance, let's take Wider by Infected Mushroom. This is a free stereo widening plugin. You should get it. Uh, just go go download it. Uh, if you make sound really wide, sounds like that. 
kind of difficult to tell there because it's really noisy. Let me make like just a really short little wub sound. Um, here, let's take a saw wave and then take an auto filter. And then let's just, just do that. Okay, we have that. Now, if you take uh, a swap utility, these are very, they sound very different in headphones. And it's subtle, but if you change it, there's a little bit more variation and dynamics going on. I mean, it's largely just the same sounds repeating over and over again, but yeah, I think I think you get the point. So here is a quick little example from a song that's coming out on my EP in like a month or two. Uh, there's a pre-save link in my bio. Go pre-save my stuff. Wow, that's supposed to be helpful. So in this song, uh, I have... It sounds like this. And here, there's these guys. And what's happening is I'm automating this to swap every five bars. And this lines up with the kicks, so just pay attention that every time the kick plays, you're going to hear something panned either to the left or to the right, and then the pattern in which the happens changes. Let's say I have this sound here, right? Let's start off with making it mono. Uh, I'm just going to solo and I'm less speaker. Right? Something that is stereo just means there's a difference between the left and right speaker. So you can easily get that by changing the volume of the left and right speaker. Or you can filter the left and right speaker differently. So you go to EQ8, you can set this mode to left and right, and then you can just start filtering shit differently. And then once you create some, some sort of weird curve looking thing, This is weird. You can then adjust the scale. And so not only does this feel kind of like it's panning between left and right, because one side is a little bit louder than the other based on where all the frequencies are in the sound and where the curve is drawn, but uh, it also, with the filtering, it seems to move like almost diagonally. So uh, let's let's maybe make this brighter. So there's an interesting movement there. And then you could do it again and move all these dudes around. In some weird, unpredictable way. And then now you can have two of these EQ8s and then you can adjust the scale of both of them. So I'm going to take the scale and map it here and there. And then you can move this around to just change the texture of things in the stereo field itself. And then you can automate the scale move.
So now let's go to our trusty little low pass filter moving over saw wave. And I want to add some sort of stereo pizzazz, some spice to this. Now, this is the central element of my mix, so I want it to be centered in the mix or pretty mono, right? So, I mean, I could try doing some of the stuff I did here, which can sound interesting. Now, notice I just kind of put the same automation from here onto here, so they're both being filtered in the same way, which can put too much emphasis on certain like frequencies. For instance, if this frequency here gets cut too much, or this frequency here gets boosted, and also gets boosted on the same spot in the other area. So what you could do to solve that is you could swap them, and that way they're going to both like fill in and take away the spaces that the other fills in and takes away, you know? <laughs> On. Now let's talk about delays. So I have the sound, but I want there to be more of a shimmer, just like a delaying effect going on. But I want the delaying effect to sound cool. So and and it's cool in the stereo field. So easy way to do that is use a ping pong delay. So I'm just using a send here. But uh, I personally don't really like the sound of ping pong delay all that much. It can work well with some sounds, but the issue with ping pong delay is it takes the entire signal and then monos it and then hard pans it left and then hard pans it right. And we're trying to get away from hard panning here, right? So like if I take here, I'm just going to take uh, oh, let me take some sounds that I made uh, this one and this one. Um, put them in a group, hard left, hard right, right? If I uh, turn on ping pong delay, you can hear both sounds are getting sent to the same channel back and forth, which isn't what I want. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a swap delay instead. So a swap delay is just going to be a delay that swaps the signal and then unswaps it and then back and forth every single time it gets delayed. This isn't an option by default in Ableton, so it's something that you have to build. And here is the part where I'm going to tell you that you should pause the video and build a swap delay yourself and try to figure it out. There's multiple ways you could go about doing it, and I think it's a great learning exercise if you want to learn more about building racks and figuring it out. Um, so yeah, highly advise, pause the video right now and then try to make a swap delay and then I'll show you how it's done or how at least I did it if you're struggling or you're too lazy to uh, go ahead and do that. So yeah, pause the video. Okay, so swap delay. I have the sound. There's, it's, uh, there's a signal sent to the left and a signal sent to the right. And I want to make a delay so that every delay the left signal goes to the right, and the right signal goes to the left, and then it goes back and forth. So one way you could do this is by using uh, sends and returns and setting up a feedback loop. So this is really fun and has a lot of like creative possibilities. But essentially, you go into a send, and then you enable send to itself. And then you can turn that on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a delay. I'm going to set the feedback to zero, because what this is doing is this says sound like if I send this sound into here, it's going to send the sound into here. It's going to get delayed by one beat, and then it's going to go out and get sent into itself, and then get delayed by one beat. And it's going to do that over and over and over again. And it's actually going to last forever because uh, it, it's getting the full volume is being sent out and returned back into the same thing. To avoid blowing up your eardrums and getting even more hearing damage, um, I'm going to take. A limiter. Put that here. So this just goes forever. And then I can like lower this. So if you know a little bit about how like volume drop off works, uh, minus six decibels is equivalent of 50% feedback. Every time a sound gets 50% quieter, it goes down by six decibels. Right? And then what you can do here is you can then insert audio effects because it's just going to keep looping through and going again. So uh, you can take your utility and then put in swap delay. 
Now this is a bit limited because you're stuck using a feedback send return delay loop and sometimes you want to like have this effect be on individual tracks and stuff so I'll show how else to do that but uh this is super cool you can apply all sorts of effects to it like you can take like a frequency shifter or something and then like pitch it up a little bit you can make this uh So this, that's, that's just going to happen for a while. It's a lot of fun. Um, I, I advise you experiment with it. Make sure you have a limiter on or you blow your drums out. Now, uh, so we're going to make a swap delay, but we're going to make it within here. So I'm just going to take, uh, let's use an echo, because I kind of like how echo, you can go to 1 64th of like a beat or a bar. It, it, you can go a lot smaller with the sync rate than you can with the delay. So I'm going to take this echo. I'm going to put it in a group. And then I, I'm gonna map some stuff. So first, I'm gonna map uh, the the division. And then I'm gonna map whether or not you can turn sync on or off. And I'm gonna map the millisecond rate here. I'm gonna map feedback here. And I mean, I think that's that's pretty much everything, right? And then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this on ping pong mode. So what does this do? This means it's going to take the whole entire signal, throw it to the left, then throw it to the right, then throw it to the left, then throw it to the right. So uh, I want this to take only the left signal and then throw it to the right and then throw it to the left. I want it to take the right signal at the same time and throw it to the left and back and forth. So we're going to do, we're going to have two of these, one that's going to start off left and one that's going to start off right. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take uh, utility. And I'm going to make this be the right signal. I want only the right signal to be thrown to the left. And I'm going to do the same thing over here for the left signal. And so if we listen now, right now it's just taking the whole signal and throwing it to the left and then the right, which means we need to swap one of the sides. So this takes, uh, I think we have to do it to the left one first, right? Because we want the left signal thrown to the right. Let me swap it. There we go. And then finally, let's create a dry wet chain. And so to do that, I'm going to create a third thing and then you can use a chain selector. I'm going to drag all of these guys out. And then drag it like that and then drag this like that. And then you can map chain selector in this dry wet as so you can turn on sync mode and now you have a swap delay going on so swap delay is super cool for instance when you have some sort of filtering going on so uh, we can name this swap delay and we throw it on here so uh, I took the swap delay and I threw it on my send so we have that going on if you know if you pan this like hard left it ends turns into a ping pong delay and so you can just like layer a bunch of stuff and everything just starts bouncing around appropriately instead of everything bouncing to the left and then to the right so it sounds cooler. Now, this will sound even better if we have some sort of cool filtering going on before it, I think. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take an EQ8, and then I am going to group this, and then I'm going to put another chain 
And I'm going to phase invert this chain beforehand. So now, you don't, if I solo this, you don't hear anything. But what you will hear is any difference between the signals, which we can use with EQ. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use four of these. I'm going to make them all band reject filters. And then I am going to do this on left and right mode, and then I'm going to kind of do the same thing. Okay, so I have this, um, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn this into this audio effect rack, and then I'm going to start mapping some of these parameters. So I'm going to take all of these four frequencies, and then I'm going to go to the left frequencies, and I'm going to map the same frequencies on the left side to the frequencies on the right side. And so that way, uh, like if I move number four around, you're going to see the both move together. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take uh, the Q for both of these. I'm going to map them to the same knob, except I'm going to invert how they are mapped. So I need to name this. I'm going to name this F4, F3, F2, F1, Q4. And then so Q4, I'm going to invert them such that if I twist this knob, you can see how they are inverting. And this is going to create differences in how the shit is filtered. So if I take uh, this sound here, it goes into this. It's something different, right? Now, uh, I think going down to 0 0.1 is too much, so I'm going to make this about 2. Maybe make this 1.5. Yeah, that's good. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other three. This, yep, 1.5. Eighteen to one point five, one point five to eighteen, maybe eighteen, one point five. So now we have all these basically band little band reject filters, and then you can uh move them around, and then you can change which side is being filtered more with this knob on the left and right speaker. Now the power on this would be imagine if all of these are being automated independently from each other around to create crazy stereo space. So if you've seen my other videos, you know where this is going. I'm going to use the Hypnos Spellbook. This is a Max for Live device. It costs $20. I use it in pretty much every one of my productions. It's in most of my other videos. It's super powerful. I highly, highly recommend you get it and play around with it. It's a two-dimensional multi-mapping LFO. So what that means is that there's this dot tracing around the shape in two-dimensional space, and wherever this dot is on the x-axis and the y-axis, you can map the x-axis to different parameters, and you can have them all modulate each other in interesting ways. And so it has huge sound design uh, like possibilities. So I'm going to map every single parameter onto here. Just like that. And then I'm going to change. Everything is mapped. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. Let's that one up. Why not? Yeah, and then we can hit times two and times four on some of these. And so now, if we move around the dot on the shape, they are all doing different independent shit. Now, I don't want the frequencies to go down into the subregion, so I am going to nudge this, touch that. Yeah, about 100 hertz is like the lowest it goes. So I'll set all these guys to about 70, and then I'll offset them. Set the range to 70 and then offset them so that they don't go too far. And then you can just let it read and spin through and just do an interesting shape. Uh, 
that's cool. And then you take this, and I'll name this, or I'll, I'll put this all in a group. And I can name this, um... Paleac, right, stereo filter, or something. And then I can take uh, this. Map the read offset there. And then, yeah, the read rate and the spin rate as well. And so now I can automate. If I don't like how the filter is at any one moment, I can automate the read rate. Right? And then at this point, then you can attach a swap delay to it as well. So let's just take a swap delay. Uh, this is just the exact same swap delay as before. Um, just had to save from previously. Right? And so, like, uh, as another example, here is a snippet of my friend singing. And then with this effect. And add some compression. We can take the effect and we can throw it on drums. And then afterwards, you can combine all of these effects. So you can take your swap delay and then chain it right after area filter device. And then um, map everything appropriately. So you can have like a dry wet for the entire rack, as well as the map the dry wet from the swap delay. And then you can use this in like all of your project files. Uh, I also attached a flatline amount percentage knob because uh, I like how the flatline sounds with the heavy filtering because the heavy filtering creates some like quiet parts and like a lot of dynamics as it moves around and compressing the ever loving shit out of it with flatline can sound really cool sometimes. Um, but yeah, this effect I use all the time. It's pretty much re entirely replaced my delay send. I have this like stereo filter and swap delay as my send instead. If we hop back to uh, this track that I showed earlier. I have uh, this send rack here, which is basically just a normal delay going into this filter thing that I showed earlier. And not only is everything being filtered moved around, but I also added some redux and it adds this really cool texture. That's pretty much the tutorial. I hope you found that helpful or useful. Um, if you'd like to be a doll, then you should go and pre-save my uh, single that's coming out next month or my new EP. And if the EP's already out, you should go listen to it. That would be even cooler. It would be even cooler than that is if you subscribe and even above that would be signing up for uh, Patreon and even, uh, alright, I'm ending the video.